Spurs going well this season. The commentator at the Valley was Tony Gobba. Sergei Rebrov's two goals in five games is a satisfactory return for the £11 million record fee that Tottenham paid for the Ukrainian striker. But Charlton can boast better value for money, paying only a third of that for the Finn Jonat Johansson, who's also scored twice in one game and 40 minutes as a substitute. And Charlton are hoping those goals continue in their battle to stay in the Premiership. Well, they make two changes from the team that fought back for a 2-2 draw at Derby. Teenager Paul Koncheski replacing Kisishev at fullback. Steve Brown in for the injured Carl Tyler in central defence. Spurs looking for a third win in a row, have three strikers today. Les Ferdinand alongside Rebroff and Stefan Iberson pushing on from the right side of midfield. In defence, Ramon Vega gets his first start of the season. Chris Perry has only made it back as far as substitute. Jeff Winter is in charge, and after three wins in five games, Spurs are sitting pretty, just one point behind the leaders, Manchester United. Charlton, with half as many points in the same number of games, are in the bottom half of the table. Spurs have got a good record here. In fact, they, uh, they haven't lost here since 1953, although there haven't been that many meetings. Teams in different divisions. Spurs winning 4-1 on their last visit in April 99, the season when Charlton were relegated. Brown will take the free kick. Campbell organising defence for Spurs. Just brushed the forehead of John Robinson. Alan Kerbishley, the Charlton manager, in discussion with his assistant. Ferdinand. For Everson, faced by Powell, slipped in for Rebroff, struck first time, saved with the knees. Frund heads it back in. Here's Sherwood. It's a corner. First opening falling for Rebroff. One of his two goals so far has come from the penalty, but he hit that early. Keely making sure that his knees were together. Leonardson will take the corner. Sherwood. Everson had the shot. Good save. Uh, Stefan Everson, top scorer for Spurs in the last two seasons. Close to finding his first goal of this season. Campbell's header. Back in by Robinson. Hunt back to Robinson. Left foot! Oh. Well... It's early days, but there's been some sparkling football to enjoy already. And Neil Sullivan in the Tottenham goal, showing that he'll be hard to beat on the afternoon as well. This is a ground on which he once broke his leg. Head of that time was by Rufus. It wasn't uh, anything like a difficult save for Sullivan, just dropping on the ball on the goal line. There's a feeling at the Valley that they're better equipped to stay in the Premiership this time than they did when they went down after just uh, one season recently. Kinsella will take the, the free kick. Ooh, clutter of players. Jensen. Hunt! He's got a very good touch, Andy Hunt. He's the sort of player that you can't take your eyes off for a second. It was a, an attempt at a shot on goal that found its way to his feet, but his, his touch was good. Red Roth to Ferdinand. Everson. Ferdinand, back to Carr. Les Ferdinand trying to brush past John Robinson 
Rebrov. Oh, it's a great strike. Well, oh, it was a fiercely struck chip, wasn't it? Tried to clip it onto the top of the netting. George Graham, two years in charge, has already won a League Cup. But Spurs have only managed to finish mid-table in the Premiership. Tariko. Rebrov. This is Leonard. Everson. Oh, he's clipped it onto the crossbar, Tariko. Charlton's goal survives again. And here's Jensen on the break. No width on the right side, so here's Powell on the left. Johansson. Powell. Robinson. And can he deliver an important ball? Oh! It clipped Frund, and that changed the direction, and Neil Sullivan couldn't get back to it, but he's saved by the post. So Charlton's response to having their own woodwork rattled is to do the same to Tottenham. That's a comfortable catch for Sullivan. Oh, Maurizio Tarico was George Graham's first signing for one and three-quarter million pounds from Ipswich. Charlton supporters enjoyed an excellent season when their team won the Division One Championship to reclaim their place in the Premiership. It's knocked into Graham Stewart. Oh, he let it run. He's confused. Sol Campbell. Here's Johansson. Oh, he scores for the third game in succession. Charlton take the lead. Graham Stewart just let it run. And that put the 25-year-old Finnish international striker in the clear. And it's tucked away with real aplomb. Graham Stewart's little dummy seemed to catch Sol Campbell out. Robinson for Powell kept in play. Well, Jonathan Johansson came on as a substitute to get the equaliser in the 1 1 draw against Southampton. He got the first goal when Charlton fought back from being 2 0 down against Derby County to get a 2 2 draw. And he's got the first goal of this match here at home to Tottenham. And what a priceless strike it might prove to be. Charlton in desperate need of the three points. And a half-time score here at the Valley of Charlton 1, Tottenham 0. Charlton's front two of Johansson and Hunt worked better in the first half than the Tottenham trio of Ferdinand, Everson and Rebroff. But it remains to be seen what uh, tactical changes George Graham might have worked out at half-time. Well, Tottenham's victories have come at home to Ipswich and Everton. Ferdinand just beaten to the ball by Kinsella, who's gone down clutching his back and stayed down. Here's Robinson. Oh, Campbell missed it! Dear me, Johansson in possession, but Tottenham in the end able to, to get it away. The England defender completely missing the ball. Ferdinand to Rebroff. Ferdinand, Everson, Leonardson. Brown who got to it first, back from Sherwood. Ferdinand! Oh, what a save! Wes Ferdinand must have thought that was goal number three for the season. 
just inside the penalty area, the ball running free, no defender in front of him. He could hardly have hit it harder. What an excellent save from the man capped by the Republic of Ireland four times. Leonard Sherwood. Tarico. Ferdinand! Oh, he's done it again! And then the follow-up shot as well from Everson is saved by Kylie. Well, nobody heads the ball better than that in that position than Les Ferdinand, and he got that one perfectly, but he still couldn't beat the Charlton keeper. The manager comes down from his position in the stand with a, a wadge of notes and observations. Chipped in for Ferdinand, headed down by Rufus. Here's Rebroff, shot was blocked. Fun thought about a shot. Everson did. Back to Everson. Sherwood. Ferdinand arrives. Out by Rufus, back by Sherwood. Everson! Oh, he's headed wide. Well, Charlton's goal at the moment is under siege from Tottenham. But a combination of excellent saves and then a misdirected header have kept the Citadel intact. Konczewski. Johansson gets underneath it. Vega came over the top. Free kick. Vega suggests Johansson was making a back, but the free kick is given to Charlton. Jensen will take the free kick. Can Charlton get a second, having survived so much in their own penalty area? Johansson's header. Just too high. Charlton more concerned with running down the clock perhaps than getting goal number two. Johansson into Kinsella. Robinson. Oh. Well, both keepers have produced excellent saves in this match to deny opponents goals. Sullivan may have seen it late with the defender in front of him. Now organising his defence as Charlton take the corner. Kinsella. Came a long way to pull it down one-handed. Alan Kerbishley with desperate last gasp instructions. Johansson. Newton. Runs around Clements. Right by Tarico, Charlton at the throw. Jeff Winters checked his watch. And Charlton in no haste to take it. Jeff Winters told them to get on with it. This is Johansson, the goal scorer, just trying to hold the ball in that corner flag. Charlton record their second win in the Premiership. Tottenham's run comes to an end. Alan Kerbisley can enjoy a smile of quiet satisfaction. And it's the, the cheaper of the two strikers, Jonathan Johansson, three and a quarter million pounds from Glasgow Rangers, who got the solitary goal just before half time. And a victory that was secured by some excellent saves from Dean Kiley. Charlton won, Tottenham nil. Alan, what, what was the key to that victory? Well, I knew that um, Spurs being um, a, big a big side and a strong side, um, we knew we had to defend once the ball went in our box. And uh, I think if you look at the chances they created, they were off of things that got knocked down uh, from an aerial challenge or whatever. And we had to make sure that we could match them physically. But I think that the key was is that obviously we worked ever so hard and we scored first. Again, we gave a team a goal start and um, we had a bad mistake, tried to play the offside and we got punished for it. Especially when we looked on top in spasms and uh, 
Arguably the man of the match was their goalkeeper. He made some fantastic saves uh, at important times. And you work hard all week individually and collectively and you know to, to perform like that. So uh, I'm very pleased with the way it went, yeah. You must have broken Les Ferdinand's heart, didn't you? Save one thunderous shot and then a well-directed header. Yeah, I said afterwards that I mean, you know, shut my eyes and uh, a few of them met me sort of thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy the way it went. You played a significant part in the goal. Yeah, I mean, I think Paul Koncheski rolled the ball into me and um, I just had a little look around the corner and just decided to dummy it. You don't get much change out of Sol Campbell these days. You know, if you hold it up, he's, you know, coming, you know, nicking it from behind you. And if you try and run him, he's too quick for you. So I was trying to outthink him a little bit. Unfortunately, it came off. And what about this guy you've got playing up front? Jonathan Johansson, that's three goals in three games. That's not bad, is it? Yeah, he looked very sharp when he first came. Picked an injury up near the end of pre-season, so he missed the first two games. But uh, he's come back sharp now with a goal of games. Mm -hmm. Playing very well for us. You've had half a dozen games in the Premiership now, Mark. What, what do you make of it? What do you make of the strength of the opposition? Yeah, no, I mean, every, every team we play again got world-class players in them. And, uh, you know, we find it difficult in certain games. But we, you know, we put, we've got good team spirit here, keep battling away. And uh, we had a battle the second half today again. And uh, we came away with three points. You know, we've played six games now and... Uh... I was just hoping today that we could keep 11 men on the pitch because it, it would give us a chance of, of getting something from the game. You know, we've had a couple of matches distorted uh, by sending offs. And, you know, I think the way the first six to ten games go, there'll be results here, there, and it'll settle down. I just hope that uh, after ten games we're in a decent position and then we play our own. Yeah, terrific win for Charlton, but after a promising start to the season, I suppose equally disappointing in many ways for Spurs. Yeah, I think uh, from Spurs' point of view, I mean, it's the sort of sort of visits away from home that you've got to get three points if you want to be a top six Premiership side. Um, I think Charlton, I mean, I'm lucky omen from the opening game when they beat City, I was speaking about them. And so they've done well. I think if they're going to survive and keep away from the relegation... Credit, if, yeah, yeah, they, you know, Alan Kerbsley, of course, <laughs> West Ham, I thought I'd toss that in. But no, I think the fact is, if they're going to stay up, they, you know, they really do need to pick up points at home. And, and that is what they didn't do yeah. last time round. And they, that's two good wins now. Yeah, we had the pleasure of Mick McCarthy this afternoon watching the games. I think <laughs> he might have been impressed with one of his goalkeepers, well, Dean Kiley. I mean, Dean Kiley played terrific. When they went down last time, I mean, they had a lot of problems during that season with goalkeepers, injuries, loss of form. So he went out and bought Dean Kiley. He played superb last season and really that was reflected in his performance today. I mean, you know, as he said, he had a bit of luck on occasion. Made two important saves in the opening 10 minutes when actually Spurs started very, very well. Rebroff, who I think is, you know, very bright, likes things in defeat, not afraid to shoot. And, and Kylie did well this time, with, you know, with his legs. Good position, though, with covering the near post. This, I thought, was an excellent save from a corner kick soon after. Everson clips it. If you see, just goes to his right, full stretch. Nobody on the post, it would have been a goal. And again, those two in the opening 10 minutes were vital. Second half, I mean, Les Ferdinand, you had two chances. I think that was a foul. Everson clattered the two defenders. Hits it on the half, folly. Yeah, good power, but possibly a nice height, but good strong wrist and gets distance away. Uh, and again, good reaction from him. And then this header, Les Ferdinand, you think, in the air, unmarked. Either side of him, it, it, it must be a goal. Knocked it straight at him. Bit of self-defence, I suppose. Up he got, though, and pounced on the Everson one. And, yeah. and at that stage, are they ever going to score? And I think a minute later, you think they aren't, because, you know, this one from Tin shows Everson, you think they must score. Uh, and to miss the goal from there, <laughs> well, I think it's going to be your dang goal. Yeah. They, they miss one or two good chances, but they're a bit shabby at the back as well, Spurs, on occasions, weren't they? Yeah, well, George said, I mean, Raymond Vega just come back into the side. He said, you know, it's a soft goal. I mean, they tr sometimes try to play the offside, and, and uh, I think once you hold the line, especially perhaps when you've got somebody new, I mean, Vega here is marking Johansson, and, you know, it, the ball's knocked into to Andy Hunt. It, it's a pretty straightforward. You, you've got to stay with the run. It's just clipped over the top. As you can see, look, his goal side, he's very square on. He's not sideways on. And at this stage, I think to myself, goodness me, he's going to be in clear on goal. But actually, Steve Carr comes across, puts him off, and he scuffs the shot. But, but the actual goal itself wasn't that dissimilar. Koncheski knocks it in. It's the dummy from Graham Stewart. And I think, again, goodness me, how's he that clear? He must be offside. Everyone's got their arm up. But actually, when you see it, this is, this is Vega again with your hands. Ball's knocked into Stewart. You know, and when it's here, I think Vega thinks Stewart's going to control it, so he decides to step up. But I mean, you know, you've just got to wait because once he comes up there, he's not offside. I mean, he's just there's no get out clause from there. It's, a, it's just a, such a giveaway goal, and, and from then, home side's got a boost, and, and your own team's struggling. And so that is a very soft goal. Okay, thanks, Trevor.